the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus. What do you get? How does it perform? And is it right for you? In this video, I'm gonna answer those questions and provide you a complete overview on the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus. Welcome to the Solar Pit. Let's get started. And if you're unfamiliar with the specifications on the Explorer 2000 Plus, let me get you up to speed here real quick. This is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter that has 2042.8 watt hours of battery capacity that can be expanded using additional expansion batteries. And you can parallel two of these Explorer 2000 Pluses together to take that AC output from 3000 watts to 6000 watts that will remain 120 volts. This does have four 120 volt AC outlets and an RV plug. If you're using this to connect to a transfer switch, this is very important. We have four USB ports over here. Two of those are USB A's and two of those are USB C's. We also have a 12 volt car socket that's pretty standard on all of these portable power stations. I've seen some not have that, but it is pretty common on most of them. We have the power switch right here. We can turn on the DC, turn on the AC. We can turn off those. And the same goes for the power here. We have a nice intuitive LED screen that tells us everything that's going on. We have the handles on the side. We have a handle that allows us to pull this around rather than have to lift it up, we can use the wheels to do that. I'm kind of on the fence about the handle because I think it's kind of flimsy and I'm not real happy with the overall quality of the handle. The handles that are on the side here, again, I think the build quality is lacking and that could be improved. We also have a split on the top of this unit that I'm not real happy with. Most of these have solid uh, pieces at the top that would allow for more weight to be put on top of them. I know you shouldn't be stacking a lot of things on top of a portable power station, but it's probably going to happen in the real life. And we want to have the best build quality as possible. So I think this is lacking in overall build quality, but in performance, it definitely does everything that it says it's supposed to do. And then on the back side of the portable power station, that's where we're going to plug in the AC input and our expansion ports remain back there as well. So this is not something that we can put against the wall and put it flat against the wall and have that heat coming out the sides. I was kind of excited about the idea of being able to put it back against the wall because we have airflow coming from the sides. So we should be able to butt this up against the wall. I wish they would have put those ports kind of at the bottom on the sides so we can use less space separating the wall and the back of the unit. That's just a personal preference for me. I know there's units that have these on the back. I like the ones that are built where you can place them as close to the wall and take up at least the amount of space possible. So here we're gonna have our battery expansion port cords coming out of the back side for this to go to our batteries. And we can do an expansion up to 12 kilowatt hours of capacity for each one of these inverters. So we've got the inverter itself or the Explorer 2000 Plus itself, and then we've got six expansion batteries. If we have two of these inverters, then we can expand that up to a total of 24 kilowatt hours of capacity. So, I mean, it does have a good amount of expandability, and that's something that I look for in a power station of this size, but I don't like the fact that we're gonna have a lot of cords on the back side of this unit that would be separating the back and the wall. So if they could put those on the sides and with one short cord, put the battery stacks on the side or something of that sort, or do a 90 degree from this down, I think that's a better design. And no, I did not forget about the solar input on the back side of this system as well. I wanted to leave this for a full segment of the video because I want to talk about something pretty briefly here and hopefully I don't get rambling on and waste a lot of your time, but I'm trying to provide you with some valuable information if you're looking to purchase a portable power station from any brand, whether it's Jackery or any other big brand or any other off brand, doesn't matter. The MPPT on this allows us to bring in a total of 1400 watts. That's two MPPTs with a maximum of 60 volts and 12 amps. 
So their max that they're saying is 1400 watts on this. That is adequate for a system of this battery capacity. If you look at it from a installer's point of view, and I've installed several systems, the more MPPTs that you have, or the more strings or branches that you have that you have to run, that means multiple copper wiring that you have to buy as well. So if you're 10 foot from this system, that's not a big deal. But if your array is 185 feet, like it is from mine, that's a huge deal because copper is not cheap. So just keep that in mind. The more MPPTs that you have, the more copper you got to buy, the more expense goes up if you're trying to build this system out correctly. Because you just don't want to drive a hole through the wall and run some cables through it and not do it correctly. That means you're going to have to have a distribution box that enters into the house and to uh, some switches, some DC uh, breaker switches that protect the unit. You're going to have multiple DC disconnects that are connect to each array to make sure you can sh shut the system down correctly. If you want to do it that way, I, that's the correct way of doing it. And I would suggest always do it that way. But that's getting outside of the point. I just want to let you know, two MPPTs means more money when you're trying to maximize this thing out. That is adequate for this system. I'm not picking on Jackery for that. This is something that's happened throughout the industry. And a lot of people are just not discussing it. But when you buy a system of this size, you're looking to back up multiple circuits or that is my intentions when you have 3000 watts or more and you have that 30 amp plug i know it's not 30 amps but it is capable of hooking a lot of people call it rv plug hooking it into an rv i use that to hook into a transfer switch a transfer switch allows me to power multiple circuits so that's why i would use a system like this for and if I wanted to do an additional battery, the batteries have their own solar that can come into that as well. And you would have to do that because 1400 watts of solar input is not gonna be enough as you start to expand the batteries out and you don't have solar connected to those batteries. So now you're talking about two strings or branches to having three, possibly four, five or six branches coming into this. That's a lot of added cost. So I just want to bring that to your attention. It's not always as simple as saying, hey, yeah, we got two solar inputs here. It's depending on how you're going to use your system. If you're not going to use this in a backup solution or you're not looking to replace a, a gas generator or something of that sort, that may not be a big deal to you. And I understand that. But if you're buying this and you're unaware of the additional cost, that's what I'm trying to bring to your attention because the install cost is an additional cost to the system itself. So just be aware of that and hopefully that helps you out. And let's take a look at the circuits that this is powering. We have eight circuits that it's currently powering. We're not powering these 240 volt circuits because this is 120 volt output. So anything that is on these single pole breakers are 120 volts. And we're powering a lot with that. Even a mini split right here that you've seen me turn on. And it's currently uh, cooling down the office right now. So this is very important. These different style breakers over here. These are considered dual function breakers, AFCI, GFCI breakers. These are required in a lot of areas in new build homes. Any jurisdiction that has adopted the 2023 NEC uh, code you're probably going to have these in your breaker panel box. And even if you are using a transfer switch, you have to bring this over to your transfer switch as well. Not all portable power stations are compatible with this. It's very important to know that your portable power station is going to be compatible with the breakers that are in your transfer switch or your panel box. Not all of them are, but the Jackery Explorer, there's that screen, 2000 plus is compatible with dual function breakers. Now let's talk about the inverter and the efficiency of this inverter because it's very impressive. I was able to squeeze out 1,869 watt hours of the 2,042.8 watt hours of capacity out of this, giving us an estimated efficiency of 91.2%. That is very impressive on any portable power station, especially one with this type of output. The most important thing about the inverter is does it do what it says it can do? And spoiler alert, it most certainly can because it is rated at 3000 watts continuous output. And I did put that to the test. When they say 
3000 watts of continuous output. That's not for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. That's until 100% to 0%. And that's how I test it. So I try to get it as close as possible to 3000 watts. So that's the claim that this inverter says that it can do. So I test it from 100% to 0% at very close to 3000 watts for the entire time. And it passed that test with no problem. And just be aware that if you're going to use this to its max capacity to drain from 100% to 0%, when you go to charge back up, you may not be able to charge it at full rate because you're doing an extreme discharge for one. It's not healthy to do that over and over and over. But then you don't want to turn around and charge it at full rate of charge either because now you're doing another extreme. So that's not something I would recommend. These are testing results. And this is something they claim that it can be done, but it's not something that's recommended to be done. So there is definitely a difference in that. But at 3000 watts down to zero, no problem. Charging back up immediately, you might see a slow uh, charge rate. It's not that the system is damaged. It's that it's protecting itself because it does have safety features built into the portable power station that keeps it from damaging the cells of the battery with the BMS that's built into this. And it has a ton of different safety features. And something I always try to point out in my videos are how loud are these portable power stations? Because we don't want one that's gonna blow your eardrums out if you've got it this close in proximity in your working zone, or if you're using this in an RV and you have to have it inside. You don't want something humming or fan so loud you can't stand it. This did come in at a very, very reasonable 42 decibels, which is basically a lot lower than my speaking voice right now. So my speaking voice right now is coming in around 62, if that tells you anything. So this is a very quiet portable power station. And the way that I did that test is in my discharge, I make sure to press this as much as possible. And then I start to charge it back up and we get it to charge as fast as possible on that. Now, I know I spoke about not doing that in this video, but for testing results, I'm trying to get the max amount of sound that I can get out of this. And if I heat everything up on the internals, it stresses the unit out a little bit more than what it would be under normal circumstances. So I'm trying to get the maximum amount of noise out of this as possible. And I did get it to charge up at 1400 watts. And when it was doing that, I took a reading and it come in around 42 decimals. So for me, that is very acceptable and actually a very quiet portable power station, especially at this size. And this is capable of transferring from AC power to DC power in 20 milliseconds. So if you're using this as a pass through and the AC power goes out, it will switch over to use the batteries inside of the power station itself in 20 milliseconds. Now you're using a DC power to power these AC outlets. 20 milliseconds is extremely fast and that's an industry standard that is being set now. That has come down a lot and 20 milliseconds is adequate if you're powering even sensitive electronic devices. I've seen faster this numbers keep coming down faster and faster. And that's what happens as we start to innovate with these portable power stations. But 20 milliseconds is extremely fast on a switch over time. And although this is considered a portable power station, hell, it's even got a handle and wheels on it. It may not be portable for everyone because this does weigh in at 61.8 pounds. And the overall dimensions are 14 and a half inches tall, 18 and a quarter inches wide and 15 inches deep. And all these batteries that I'm talking about inside the unit and even expansion batteries are rated life expectancy of 4,000 cycles to 80%. And that's how we rate LFP batteries or LiPo4 batteries for life expectancy. We want to know how many cycles that it takes to bring that battery down to 80% of capacity left in it. Now we have companies that rate up to 70 or down to 70%. I like 80%, it's more of an industry standard and 4,000 cycles to 80% is a really good number, but it doesn't mean that your system is shot after uh, 4,000 cycles. That means you got 80% of the original capacity that you once had when it was brand new. Now, either you love this or you hate this. I don't know. I actually prefer it to have some type of connectivity to an app because I can control this from anywhere in the world as long as this is connected to Wi-Fi. A lot of people do not like the fact that some of these portable power stations 
uh, have the Wi-Fi and even others require you to have it to control it. Now, you don't have to have Wi-Fi to control this portable power station, but it can connect to an app and you can control it from anywhere in the world. If you're close by, you can control it with Bluetooth. If you don't have Wi-Fi or you can just control it from the box itself. But the app does connect seamlessly and it doesn't take any effort to get this thing set up and running. It happens in no time. The problem that I have with the app is that you can't have two uh, devices connected to it at one time on the same username because it will log you out of the first one and then you got to log in with the second one. And then if you want to log back into the, the first one that you had, then you got to log out of that second one back into the first. I don't like that. You should just give me a permission that allows me to connect into multiple devices if I would like. This does not allow me to do that. And if I get logged out and I have certain settings in there, it has reset some of those settings as I come back in on the device. And I don't like that. And the one setting that I'm pointing out here is the screen timeout. I don't like that we do not have an option to turn that on to never turn off. This maximum setting for this one is two hours. So after two hours, that screen turns off. And I'll explain why I don't like that. It's because if I have this set up in my garage or in my house, and I just wanna walk by to see the screen, to see where my uh, state of charge is, I have to walk over to it, hit the power button to turn on the screen to be able to see that or pick up a device and log in to see where my uh, state of charge is. I should be able to just walk by at a glance and see that. So. That's what kind of annoyed me about the app. Overall, it is a good app. There's a couple things that could be changed on it though. If a warranty is important to you, Jackery offers some of the best warranties there are on a portable power station. Plus, if you're offering a warranty, we wanna know that we can contact customer service and someone's gonna pick up the phone. So let's give them a ring and see how well their customer service is. Please listen carefully to all of the following choices as our menu options may have changed. And what I'm looking for here is for how long does it take me to get someone inquiries. on the phone? Please press one. So for support. Market, for warranty registration inquiries, please press one. Maybe I should do it for warranty. For shipping issues or return replacement inquiries, please press two. For product or order related technical support, please press three. Let's go with three. To speak, your call is important to us. Please have your model number available and press zero to be connected to the next available agent. You can also email hello at jackery.com for further I don't like assistance. having the email. If you would That's like why I like having a phone number. By text, please press one to confirm and follow the instructions. Your call is important to us. Please have your model number available and press zero to be connected to the next available agent. Please hold while you are connected to the next available agent. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. We're about a minute and five seconds into it. We just got through the prompts. See how long we have to wait. Or if we even get someone on the phone. And I am going to hang out when someone picks up. Hello, this is Nevela from Jackery. How can I help you today? So not bad. I mean, we had a minute and 25 seconds on the phone to get someone to help us with a problem that we might have with our portable power station. This is not something you're going to receive with a lot of different portable power station companies. So just keep that in mind. The warranty is something I would trust in Jackery to fulfill. And if you need someone in customer service, just give them a call.